from transforming data to creating interactive visuals. In this video, we'll learn Power BI in three simple steps. So let's get into it. First up, to download Power BI, if you haven't already, you would simply go under the Microsoft Store and from here type Power BI. Hit enter there. And the one that we wanna look for is Power BI Desktop. So go ahead and install it if you haven't already. All right, so we're now inside of Power BI. And before we get into it, we first need to import and transform a data set. So for that, we're gonna be using this Excel file right over here, which you can actually download for free in the video description. So within Power BI, we can either go down over here under import data or over to get data, Excel workbook. From here, go ahead and find the file. For me, it's gonna be this one right here. And I'm just gonna hit on enter. That's gonna open up this navigator. And within it, you can see that we can pre preview the three sheets that we had on that Excel file. So we wanna select all three of them. And from here, we're gonna have two options, whether it be to load or to transform. Load is simply going to put the data inside of Power BI, while in transform, we're gonna get a chance to clean it up. So let's go ahead and click on transform. This opens up what's known as the Power Query Editor, as you can see up over here. And so we've got the three tabs to the side. And suppose we wanna make some changes to the products. Under product name here, you can see that we have all of the numbers. Let's say we wanna separate that from the product name because these numbers are simply the sizes. So we will go over to the transform tab and then we would go to split column and we wanna split it by a delimiter. So that delimiter is fine with a comma as it comes by default and we'll hit on okay. And you can see that we now have this new column, which is gonna be all of the sizes. So we can double click there and change that to the size. Now, if you ever wanna go back a step, you have all of the applied steps over here to the side. So you can just go ahead and click or remove one. Then as we already have under products, the actual colors, you can see the black, silver, and so forth. We don't need this column over here. We can also remove that by going over to home and just going to remove columns. And there we go. And just so you know, none of these changes are actually happening to the original Excel file. It's just within Power Query. Now we can hit on close and apply. And from here, it's gonna upload all of the data into Power BI. This takes us to our second step, which is reports and visualizations, where we'll make some visuals that you can't find in Excel. But before that, we need to first understand the different views. So we've got the report view, which is basically where you would do the actual analysis. So the visuals and the reports. Then we've got the table view here, which is going to show all of the data that we have. This is where you would make any changes to the data. And then finally, we've got the model view, which is where we link all of the data. So we've got three different tabs here. You can see if you hover over this, customer key is linked to customer key under sales, as you can see there. And similarly for products, suppose we wanna link the product here to the product under sales, just so they're going to be linked by the ID number. So we can just drag and drop them like so. And you can see that when we hover over it, they're going to be linking right there. So this is a feature that doesn't quite exist in Excel, but basically it allows you to work with multiple tabs of data. So let's head over to the report view and get started with the visuals. Inside of the report view, if you look all the way to the right, you're going to have the visualizations and the data. So suppose we wanna create a column chart. So you can just click on that and let me just drag it like so. From here, you're going to have the X axis, and the Y axis. So suppose that we wanna find out simply the sales by date. So we will go under the sales data here and let's suppose we wanna select the dates and we also want to select the sales amounts. So now we basically have the revenue by year, as you can see over here. You can also drag and drop these instead of ticking on them. When you tick them, Power BI automatically places them to where it thinks they belong. So from here, you can see that we have it on an annual basis. What if we want it on a quarterly basis? Well, we can use what's known as the drill down feature in Power BI. Let me just close this for now. And so you can click on this button over here, go to the next level in the hierarchy, so now we have it by quarter, we can also have it by month, and even all the way to by day. So that's what's nice about this drill down feature. You can also change the type of visual. So from here, suppose we wanna switch to a line chart. It's much easier than in Excel. We just need to click it 
and you can see how that switched it. We could even take this a step further and actually try to interpret the data. Let's say we're interested in this 2018 data and why it's gone up. We can just right click on it, go to analyze and explain this increase. So this is going to use artificial intelligence to try to see why this happened. So it says here that mountain bikes accounted for the majority of the increase among the categories. So you can see the big increase there. Suppose we wanted this waterfall chart in our report. We can actually just hit on that plus sign and it's going to add it inside of it as well. You can see here to the side. One awesome visual that's just not available inside of Excel is the decomposition tree. So suppose I want to change this line chart. Let's say I change it to that decomposition tree. So it's going to be this one right here. So what this allows you to do is explain the increase or the decrease. So we've got the revenue here. Right now it's called sound sales amount. If you want to rename it, you can just double click on the actual value and just call it say sales and hit enter there. So we've got sales at 29 million. I can try to see what was the high value from there. It was 2018. Go further into the high value of 2018. It's this quarter. And I can even try to get that breakdown by month. Same thing goes with any other year. We can just click on it and see what exactly happened. And if you're liking this tutorial and you want to learn more, you can consider checking out our Power BI for business analytics course. In our all-inclusive curriculum, we start with data cleaning and transformation using Power Query. Then we'll get into data visualization tools, followed by DAX or data analysis expressions, which is what you would use to build formulas inside of Power BI. Then to simulate real work scenarios, we'll have two extensive case studies where one will focus on building a profit and loss dashboard from scratch on Nike, while the other will focus on visualizing McDonald's European restaurant operations. Currently, 97% of Fortune 500 companies use Power BI. So if you're looking to invest in yourself, check out the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. While we've looked at some visuals, we've also got KPIs, which is short for a key performance indicator, and they're very common in business. So suppose we want to know some of the key figures. For that, we can use cards. So just click on that card once. Let me resize it quickly. And suppose that within this card, we want to know what's our total sales. So the total revenue amount, we would just drag and drop it inside of the field. And you can see how it calculates the sum. We could also find the average by just going down to that drop down and clicking on average. So our average sale is around $500. Now, if we look at the data right now, we don't have anything for profit. So for that, we could actually create what's known as a measure, which is basically a calculation. So we can go under quick measure, just click on that. And so what kind of calculation do we want? Well, suppose we want a subtraction. So let's go ahead and click on that. And the base value, well, we want to get the sales amount. And then we want to subtract the product cost. So the revenue minus the cost should give us the profit. We're just going to go on add there. And you can see that it's created a new measure. We can know that it's a measure with the calculator sign. So now we can go ahead and drag and drop it. And you can see that if we go back up here and close out of this, We've got 12.8 million. This is basically our profit. To rename it, we can just go ahead and right click on it and go to rename and call it profit and hit enter there. Awesome. One final visual that's worth noting is the Q&A box. So for that, just go ahead and click on this commentary icon. That's a Q&A box. Let me resize it. With this, we can pretty much ask Power BI anything about our data. Like for example, what is the total number of customers? So total customers. And you can see that we have a total of 18,000 customers. Finally, in step three, let's explore the sharing and collaborating features of Power BI. And for that, we just need to go all the way to the side where it says to share and just click on publish. And from there, it's going to go ahead and upload it. So suppose we want it in our work workspace. I'm just going to hit on select. And now when we click on it, we can preview it on the internet. And not just that, we can also share it with other people. 
For example, under the comments, we could go ahead and tag anybody that we wanted, like for example, our manager, or we could also export it not just to Power BI, but for example, into a PowerPoint as well. So let me go ahead and show you that. So over here, we have the exact same report in a PowerPoint slide. This is fully dynamic. So if there's any changes to the actual report, then everything is going to change and we can even make changes inside of it like so. For more on Power BI visuals, check out this video over here or take our Power BI course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.